Hi, I'm David Lund. I'm a commercial photographer. I specialize in liquids and uh, often at the NEC and sometimes on stage, uh, often making a mess. Uh, you may have seen the image a few years ago uh, where we made quite a big mess and I believe the stage had to be recarpeted. So very sorry for that, the photography show. Uh, we're going to make just as big a mess this time and I'm really excited to share this, uh, this video with you. The behind the scenes for this video are going to be put together by a company called Cow Decor Productions. Now I think they're possibly the youngest uh, photography company in England. Uh, I actually came across them when they came on one of my masterclass uh, lighting, high speed lighting courses. I think their work is really exciting and it's not so much where they are but where I can see them going because they're so passionate. So this is something I use an awful lot. Um, when I use backdrops, I mean, you can use paper and you can use painted walls or whatever. I actually really like to control that with light, the color. And the way I do that is it might look odd, but I actually use this, what's called a stone, um, I believe it's stone gray uh, acrylic frost. And it, it can look quite dark, but the, the idea behind this is that when you get a, a light, a powerful light behind it, with, in this case, with a big yellow gel on it, that yellow becomes intensified it makes it very rich we've got um, we've got a five light setup we've got that one big light which in a big six foot softbox and we've got cones on all these lights and the reason we've got cones is because we want a very structured uh, very crisp structured look uh, it's very important of shooting anything that you have dark as well as light otherwise everything becomes quite flat uh, so that's our kind of dark, slightly dark side this is more illuminated side. And then we've got our, Hassel, our um, Hasselblad here. Um, we've got our Broncolor lighting all set up there. We've got our laptop, our trigger system, and uh, we're all good to go. Okay, we're at the stage where we're gonna prepare the melon. Uh, now, it would be very tempting and very easy and very satisfying just to cut a small hole in the melon, put it on the explosive and bang, you've got a you know, a particularly interesting image, a lot of drama. However, we want to push it on. We want to see what we can do. That's in the bag. We know we can do that. So no point just doing that alone. So what I'm going to attempt to do is an idea where we actually, because of the, the pith, the, the texture of the melon is, is actually not that attractive when it's exploded. It, it becomes very fragmented. We are actually going to scoop a lot of that out and replace it with fruit and red liquid that's actually thick. Uh, so we're going to be using the thickening agent here, which keeps the liquid totally transparent. Uh, and that will uh, allow that water to become more like, well, towards honey if we want to be, want it to be that way, depending on how much we, we actually put in. But the idea behind that is that the, the solidness of that will do two things. One, it will create a really nice rounded uh, look to the liquid that we, we see, but also it will dampen the smoke that inevitably comes from the firing of the cartridge, which is a very unattractive part of the image. So it's a twofold thing there. Um, other thing we want to do is just attach strawberries all on the outside. And the way we're going to do that is just simply with lots and lots of toothpicks. Um, now, in reality, this, this is for today, this is fine, but a full on commercial shoot, we would find a device that's maybe tiny little pins so you can hardly see them. Any still image, of course, you can Photoshop things out, but if it's a video, you, you really want to try and sort of cover these sort of things up. So we're just going to use things like this and we're going to just attach all over it, strawberries, um, lemons, limes, uh, segments of oranges, pineapple, and we're just going to have a blast and see what we can come up with. But the initial idea that we want to do is to cut this melon. So we're going to actually attempt to We're going to scoop this out. And uh, the idea is now to fill that with this thickening agent. And what we're going to do is we've got some quite warm water here. Uh, we're going to actually add a thickening agent. Add some colouring.
Okay, so it's really rich and it's got a lovely thickness to it. It's nice. So uh, we actually need to fill up our balloon. Uh, it's actually uh, not a balloon, but it's a condom. Uh, the reason we're using this is because the balloons are just basically they're too thick and, and too, too, too much elasticity to them. So the volume of liquid isn't weighing it down and stretching it. So a uh, bit of a dash to the garage. Uh, one of my assistants kindly went down there and got these. So this is all part of the thing, problem solving. So let's just see if this solves the problem. So we'll attempt to fill this up. That's excellent and as expected. Now at this point we might want to place it inside our melon. Let's position this over here. And keep flinging it up. Okay, so there we go. We've got a large amount of liquid inside our melon. We'll tie that off. Uh, fill it with strawberries and then do a take, see what happens. Okay, so we've just done another shot. We actually reduced the gunpowder in the cartridge down to about 20%. We deliberately took it down um, just to sort of find a, a kind of a better point, starting point, knowing we can take it back up. So we, we've got to this image here, and I'll just zoom in, and you can see that it's, we've got a lovely image, but we've just captured it just a bit too early, or potentially just not enough power, because it's really struggling to, to break the, uh, the, the structure of the melon. Uh, the melon shell is actually quite tough. Um, one thing you can do with this is just, um, put it in liquid nitrogen and that will actually um, really fragment it, make it very brittle. So when it shatters, it, it has a beautiful effect. So we're gonna just do this again. The liquid, you can see it's working really nicely. It's got this nice thick roundness to it, which makes it look more, more sort of healthy and moist and rich. Um, so that's working lovely. The lighting on the melon is great. So we're just gonna go again, but we're gonna go up to about 40% of the, the, the cartridge gunpowder level and just see if we get more of a, more of a bang, okay? So one of the problems with uh, the mel melon uh, as a piece of fruit is naturally when it's uh, ex exploding, it's finding its own weaknesses, its own natural sort of um, st structural weaknesses, which we don't know what they are. So we are actually going to try and control those and uh, get more separation rather than big chunks or flesh flying out. We're gonna we want multiple chunks. We want more, more individual pieces of structure. So we're gonna weaken uh, the structure by just piercing uh, in lines across the surface of the skin and that way it potentially might just help 
create nice segmented um, pieces flying out as opposed to big chunks. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Okay, so for this shot, what we did, we actually did an experiment. Uh, I always say it's, it's trial and error. You've got to try things, even if they go wrong, but they're often stepping stones to something else. So the idea was to try and weaken the, the structure, the shell of the melon. And we did that by using a fork and zigzagging down, down the outside, all over it. And you can see here, it's actually worked. If we zoom in here, you can actually see the actual point of breakage and it's, it's down the line, the seam of our zigzag. So the principle works, and that's the great thing about this type of photography is you try things, you solve problems, and you can build on that. So we're now gonna try the same idea again, but push it even further and really weaken that structure. So hopefully the whole thing separates. Okay, we have a selection of cameras here. Uh, we've got some, a Canon one here. It's actually quite old. I think that's 14 years old. It's been all over Africa and Egypt, all over the place. Good old tough body. Um, don't use that a great deal now because the nature of my work's changed. But we've also got the Hasselblad and the Red. Now, one thing I like to say and share and encourage people with is there's no such thing as the perfect camera. It's all about the right camera for the right job. Uh, that goes for cameras as well as lighting. So, while I might use the Hasselblad for my stills, I may also use uh, the RED for uh, video. Now, while I might use the RED because it, it does have a particular quality to it, I will often use mirrorless cameras. For me, the most important thing uh, about video making is my mobility, is my creativity. What I don't want to do is be restricted by the bulk and weight and, and kit needed to, to achieve the shots I want. And I do, I do openly give Sony a bit of a plug, uh, not wanting to make it too much of a, an advert, but I do really think it's the most phenomenal camera. I use the S2 for the British Steel uh, corporate video. Uh, the reason I did so was because the light conditions were so poor, I needed a, a camera that could cope with those really dark situations. It's also very light, uh, so it meant I was nimble uh, and, uh, it makes the job almost more enjoyable as well because you're not lugging around loads of kit. Um, the new S3 is fantastic and this actual behind the scenes video is all being uh, filmed on the S3. The lighting I mainly use is Bronco. Um, I've got the Scro 3200S packs. The reason I use these primarily is because I'm a liquid specialist. I need the high speed flash. So this is, goes up to, or slows down to rather, at one ten thousandth of a second, which is brilliant. There are plenty of other types of lighting, uh, Elecrom, um, Profoto, all great. Uh, and they all have different jobs. And, and like the cameras, it's not about this is the best lighting. It's all about the right lighting for the right type of work. Uh, just to scale it the other way, I did a shoot for uh, what was the world's most expensive diamonds. I think they sold for 15 million quid a few years ago. And actually on that shoot, despite having 200,000 pounds of kit uh, on board, we actually used an iPhone. Uh, my actual iPhone has a tiny little light on it. And we used that to get a particular type of effect on that diamond. So just goes to show, it's not all about money. Okay, so we've got the images um, and we're going to look at a, a few of these. Uh, it's so much fun. I absolutely love this job. Um, 
and one of the things I think, I'm just going to be really honest with you when I show you these images, there are some really bad ones. And that's part of the process. Uh, some of them don't work, uh, or pretty much fail, because we actually push the idea. Um, once we know what we're doing, it's very easy to fall into that trap of repeating it. Uh, but the key thing is to photography, one, to be a really good commercial photographer, and also, secondly, to actually really enjoy what you do, is to push, push it. So once you've got something, then think, okay, how can I add to this? How can I push it? What creative things can I do here? What can I add into it? Um, and it's that type of thinking process that can really get you to a new place and help you deliver an image that you think, wow, this is exciting. So if we just look at some of these images, you'll see that um, initially we started off with the general explosion, which works great. Unfortunately, with this technique, there is a little bit of smoke involved, uh, especially when it's a full cartridge because it gives such a wallop. Um, but as we move through the images, you start to see a progression of where we've added the, the ball of liquid inside, the, uh, inside that condom, inside the melon. And also noticing with this image in particular, that that liquid, because we added that thickening agent into it, the way that the, it shimmers uh, works so nicely, it looks so rich and full, as opposed to just water or colored water. So by adding things inside, uh, scooping out the inside of the melon, adding in that liquid in the ball, in the balloon, let's call it the balloon, okay? And then stuffing it with strawberries and oranges, and then adding fruit on the outside of the melon just helps take it a bit further. Now, you can obviously see lots of sticks involved here that we've used, but that's not a problem. They're all easily photoshopped out. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's been an absolute pleasure uh, to show you this, and I'm really looking forward to next year when we're all back at the NEC, and I'm sure it will be a fantastic uh, event. So until then, thank you and goodbye.